Hello everyone, it's me again, Craig Halp. Me. <laughs> uh, is episode 21. Uh, we're going to be looking at painting number 12 of the 48. And then we're going to take a little journey uh, for my first interview. To do my first interview. My first. Uh, so be easy on me. Uh, uh, with friend and fellow artist Karen, she's going to discuss gouache. Uh, also, ending credits, uh, musical guest is No Pierre, a uh, little bit of light jazz. Okay, we're going to start off with one of the 48 paintings, as always. Uh, this one's number 12. It's titled Red Sphere, and uh, we're going to see... As always, the doodle, the worksheet, and the finished painting. And I'll meet you back here. Okay, Bob, you're up. Great, thank you. Uh, this doodle right here is circled in red. Uh, it's number 12 of the 48. Uh, this is probably one of the more abstract shapes that I have worked with. I mean, they all seem abstract to begin with, but I just did not see any potential narrative with it. Uh, you'll see more of that in the worksheet. Okay, this is the full size 8x10 worksheet. Uh, as you can see, there is a suggestion of a spider type of shape, uh, but it just wasn't enough for me to attach any type of narrative to it, so I did not title it that way. As you can see when I show you the finished painting. Okay, and here's the finished painting. Uh, it's titled Red Sphere. Uh, and I know, I know, I know <laughs> that it still has the essence of a spider in there. Uh, I just did not want it to read that way as a painting. Uh, so uh, I just titled it The Red Sphere uh, in hopes <laughs> that people would see it more as an abstract uh, than as a spider. So a friend of mine, Karen, a uh, wonderful artist, has been learning how to paint with gouache. I'm not going to explain it. I'm going to let her explain it because uh, I'm going to be interviewing her. Uh, and like I said, my first interview. So I'm, I'm getting my feet wet with all of this because as not only am I designing an art book, but I'm also creating a video about it and part of creating the video uh, entails a lot of different levels of bringing the art into into this series and one of them is uh, the different uh, types of artwork that's being done and also the different professions that will also touch on how this book is being done the, the uh, the scanning uh, businesses, the, the print making, the you know the, the salespeople, the uh, going to the, the galleries. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to do my first interview, and I'm packing up uh, all the uh, lights, stands, cables, splitters for the microphones, uh, cameras, uh, everything I'm going to be needing, and I'll meet you down there. <laughs> you holding your glasses there. I'm with Karen Trimble, uh, artist extraordinaire. <laughs> uh, she had brought up, I knew about oil, I knew about uh, acrylics and watercolors and, and color pencil and all those things, but I wasn't really familiar with the subject that she just started working with, and that's uh, a media called gouache. So I'm going to ask Karen, <laughs> what's gouache? <laughs> All right, I have to put on my cheaters for that. Okay. Okay, so gouache is um, a professional grade uh, opaque water medium, okay, paint medium. Uh, the closest thing that people would recognize to it is temper like children use in, in school, but this is artist grade. Um, it was basically an illustration medium, so if you know of any famous illustrators like Lyon Decker, um, that always illustration. Therefore, 
gouache wasn't considered fine art until contemporary times. Um, there's several ways that you can do it, and being an oil painter, this has been a learning process for me as well, because I'm used to blending and scumbling and glazing, and you don't really do much of that in gouache. So I'll show you a couple things that gouache can do. Uh, I'm going to show you a photograph from a book here, because this is what they call a poster style. This is exactly similar to what illustrators do. So it's very discreet paint marks. The, the clouds are very distinctly outlined. The sh shadows on the hills are very distinct areas of color. They're not blended. Hold They're on. not, okay. So this is what I call discrete paint sections here. No blending. There's a little bit of dry brush right here. So some of the other things that you can do with gouache are, you can use it truly like watercolor. So this is one of the first examples of, I've been working on this for about a year. Um, and not being familiar with it, it came out looking very, very much just like watercolor. There is some opacity in it, but not very much at all, all right? You can also use a dry brush technique, all right? So on this one, if you look in the background, see all this sort of scratchy mark making? That's just using a very chopped up uh, bristle brush and just making scratch marks for the creation of texture, okay? So this is an example where I used a little pen and ink to do a little detail line work. All right, you can use a colored pencil over top of gouache. Um, pretty much any medium and any, any approach. If you wanted to put it on thick and scratch it with a, uh, uh, an eraser or a, a credit card or something like that for a certain effect, it's really a pretty versatile medium. The only thing you have to be aware of when you're using gouache is the lights uh, dry darker and the darks dry lighter. Okay, does it dry faster, acrylics dry fast? Does it dry faster than acrylics? Um, I'd have to say the same or faster. Um, and the reason for that is because it is, at least in my experience, uh, when you squeeze it out, it starts to dry immediately. And one of the things that you need to have when you work with gouache is a spray bottle. So I don't use um, an airtight palette. I have one, but because I don't use gouache every single day, it's not a good idea to save your gouache. But even when you have it, as I'll show you here, on a piece of palette paper, right, this is a palette tablet just like you would use for oil paint. Um, I have to spray it because it does dry out. And then as you mix water into it, um, it thins out and the thinner it gets, the more watery it is. And these are my gouache tubes. Okay. So I'm just going to stick them right over here so that they're handy. Oh, hold on, you got a glass of water ready to keel over there. Yeah, the, which is another thing you need. Just like with watercolor, you need two glasses of water. One is for rinsing and, and one is for dipping. And paper towels. But other than that, <clears throat> pretty much any brushes you're comfortable with, uh, synthetic or, or sable brushes, probably synthetic, are the best. But I do have some uh, bristle brushes and just some old brushes. I'll show you one in particular, two in particular. All right, if you can see those, they're all torn up. I chopped them with a, a razor blade and scissors to get these rough edges, and that's what I used on that dry brushing on that quince apple painting. Okay. Um, you don't want to use bristle brushes because they're too absorbent. Um, so a, a synthetic or, or sable, and these are just very inexpensive brushes. You get like 20 in a set for $10 at your local art shop. So. Lots of different things. You can use sponges, all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay, um, substrates, all right? You can paint on pretty much anything that you could use for uh, watercolor or acrylic. Okay, so um, you can use, this is watercolor uh, paper. You can use canvas. You can use Bristol paper. You can use multimedia board. Um, pretty much a hand-painted, hand-made hand paper. It depends on if you want a textured or a flat surface. I'm finding the longer I do this, I prefer a flat, sort of a smooth surface. Um, the paintings I showed you are done on, I think it's a handmade Italian paper that was in a sketchbook that was given to me as a gift. Okay. So that's my, the most of my experience. Um, any questions so far? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the last thing I, I, important thing I want to point out, do I have anything on the back? No. Is um, matting. Okay. Uh, because it is a watercolor, a water base uh, paint, you cannot leave it exposed to the air. So the classic way of, of, of framing these things are with a mat under glass. Okay. Okay. So I have two more little things to show you. Craig had asked me to show the difference between, where did I put it? 
oops, they're on the floor. Okay. Um, the oh, difference between uh, an oil and a gouache. So here's an oil painting. This is not varnished. And this is the same subject, but done in gouache. Now, because I didn't varnish the oil painting, it's not particularly shiny, all right? But the paint application is, um, notice you, I don't know if you can see this in the film, the texture that you can get with oil paint, you can't really get that 3D texture with gouache. Okay. It's too fine. So what you do is you overpaint and scumble a little bit to get some of the textures that you want. Um, I still use gouache very much like an oil painter. I haven't mastered that discrete application yet. So there's that, and I have an even better example. All right, so uh, it's a demo for my students, um, landscape, obviously, but I think even on your camera, you can see the texture that is possible to get with oil paint that is not possible to get with gouache. Also, the color is much more intense. You probably noticed that with the oranges as well. It's much more saturated. So this is a landscape that I did in gouache. Not the same subject, but you just can't get the same texture, not even in the, the palm trees. Okay, so side by side, I'm sure you can see the rich, richness of the color of the oil paint. And as pleasant, if I say so myself, as the gouache is, it doesn't have that same richness and intensity. And again, this is because the lights dry darker and the darks dry later. It's almost like a sort of like a heavier watercolor. Well, yeah, it is, uh, mm. it, but it's opaque. Right, I mean, if regular right. watercolor is transparent, that's its, in its nature. But as I said when I showed the peach painting earlier, you can use it like watercolor. I have seen several paintings recently uh, by artists who use gouache that combine gouache and watercolor. I don't know if they do the watercolor first and then add the gouache for opacity. I would assume that that's what it is. Um, but people who are very experimental, like I said, with colored pencil or pastel and combining various mediums, um, get lots and lots of different kinds of, of effects. Okay. So, okay, so you're going to do a real quick demo. I have. Do you want to pause for a second while I set up a moment? Yes. Okay. Well, as you can see, we not only paused, <laughs> but we stopped. Right, at least I edited it at a stop. Uh, my videos are usually in the 10 to 15 minute range and uh, the demonstration was going to take us far beyond that. So I decided it, it has been filmed, it's just that I, I spliced everything right there to stop. And uh, so what we have is a, a cliffhanger of sorts. <laughs> so next episode you'll see the demonstration of uh, Karen. Uh, doing a, a, a gouache painting. Uh, with that, uh, we also have for music credits, uh, Noel Pierre, and uh, then we also uh, saw painting number 12, painting number 13 will be next week. Uh, be good, be safe, and take care. Bye.